Good afternoon. My name is Emma Stewart. I direct the Sustainability Solutions Group at Autodesk. And there I am charged with incubating new design software that addresses the energy, water, and materials related challenges in the buildings, infrastructure, and manufacturing sectors. But this afternoon I want to start by talking about what my daughter has taught me about the future of cities. And that's because my daughter is an urban kid through and through. She was born in a hospital on a hill overlooking the city's skyline. Uh, she has a library down the block, three parks within a 10 minute walk, and dozens accessible by bus or by light rail. She has playdates with three other families on our block and makes regular appearances at the weekly farmer's market, science museum, and local pool. The car is foreign and boring to her. She is one of three billion urbanites, which will be four to five billion urbanites by the time she's my age. So, as you've heard, these new centers of humankind represent the majority of the world's GDP, its resource consumption, and its waste production. In the petri dish of Earth, they are the dense clusters of life, growing organically atop a global culture. But by 2050, these cities will have either reinvented themselves or burst at the seams. If we play our cards right, the 2050 city will recognize its context, situated within a natural and agricultural ecosystem that provides its denizens with, with abundant raw materials, free crop pollination, and genetic diversity. The 2050 city will be resilient, responding to long-term shifts through adaptive reuse and short-term shocks through high-tech smart devices and low-tech biomimetic designs. The 2050 city will be water neutral, drawing from its aquifers only as much as it can recharge and the rest from the sky or recyclers that will then be part of basic plumbing. The 2050 city will rely so heavily on efficient building design, decentralized generation, district energy systems, and multimodal transit that its citizens will emit no more than one ton of greenhouse gases per person per year. So how do we get from here to there? I won't pretend that urban redesign is straightforward. As you've seen here, it requires conceptualizing within the constraints of existing developments, tending to the often competing needs of various stakeholders, convincing the citizenry to vote with their pocketbooks for new financing, and accomplishing large-scale projects on a time frame that keep the city and its resident industries competitive for both taxes and talent. All of these challenges will still exist when my daughter is an adult. So what will be different? The one thing I can bet on with absolute certainty is that before she knows how to drive, how to vote, or how to pay taxes, she'll be able to simulate her city on a computer. As we'll see in the video, we are working with cities around the world on what this might look like. Since buildings typically account for the majority of end-use energy, she may first press play, please. Great, thanks. She may first want to determine which of the city's buildings shown here are suitable for energy retrofits, perhaps a cool roof program to reduce cooling loads. She can analyze the roof types to exclude complex or pitched roofs or those who have perhaps already committed their roof space to other functions. She can also consider where rooftop photovoltaics make sense based on sun insulation values embedded in the software. And to understand daylighting, the program tells her where the sun and its shadows will be at every hour of every day of every year. She might then connect to an economic calculator shown here to determine whether PV panels make better economic sense than roof whitening in this district. Second, as most cities are contending with increasingly frequent and severe storms alongside already overburdened stormwater and wastewater systems, 
She'll then use the tools shown here to increase the relative amount of permeable versus impermeable surface, just as a urban hydrologist would, but without all of the expertise required. By using conceptual design, really sketching tools, within the context of the existing environment, which has been imported through laser scanning or GIS maps, she'll be better able to explore designs which embrace low-impact development techniques. She can look at the hydraulic effects of green stormwater infrastructure in an attempt to avoid the need for yet another costly wastewater treatment plant, and data within the model will allow her to compare her conceptual sketch with reality for permeability, for impermeability, the effects of rain gardens, bioswales, green roofs, and the like. She might move on to tackle transportation, especially since congestion is so costly to cities both in productivity and emissions. Our customer, shown here, the city of Vancouver, has built a simulated version of their entire city by combining terrain files, building footprints, satellite photos, and GIS data for parcels and streets into a 3D modeling program. These simulations are becoming even more affordable and accessible now that they're running in the cloud and not on the desktop and together we'll be able to see how their stormwater system could be improved or their energy efficiency incentives better targeted. So why are we using techniques from the 1800s like dams, levees, and clipboards? When we have technology from the 21st century like 3D modeling, simulation, and cloud computing. My daughter, your children, and their five million future urbanite friends would happily give this a try. And I think we owe them as much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.